Now these aren't the kind of vacuum tubes that you might have seen in Futurama, though that would be pretty damn cool. No, alright, that would be amazing. But this system's still quite useful. It will transport passengers in trains located within the tubes. Actually sounds a bit safer. The idea is that without any air resistance and by using a magnetic levitation line, trains can travel at incredible speeds, around four to 5,000 miles per hour. That, that is fast. That could get you from New York to Beijing in under two hours. Zoom. The problem with jetpacks is, and look, I know I pin down people at parties and say this a lot, but the problem with jetpacks is, because of their appearance in so many science fiction movies, the idea of one becoming a real mode of transport is rarely taken seriously. But now, thanks to New Zealander Glenn Martin, that soon may all change. It's called the world's first practical jetpack. The device is powered by ducted fans and can fly for 30 minutes at a time. It has a maximum speed of 46 miles per hour and can reach altitudes of 3,000 feet. Although it's still in development, the unit is aiming for a retail price of $150,000. So start saving now. While the name Road Train may be a bit misleading, the concept here is still an interesting one, and something which could ease the terrible congestion problems that many highways and roads still suffer from. Road trains are an intelligent transport system where one lead vehicle is wirelessly connected to other cars that follow its exact path autonomously. Whenever a driver wishes to leave the train, they simply turn off the device and regain control of the vehicle. Easy. And the advantages of this system simply include being able to have a series of cars safely travelling at high speeds in close proximity to each other. Congestion, fuel costs and road safety could all be improved with this method. Similar in design to the vacuum tube, the Hyperloop is a concept that comes from Tesla Motors headman Elon Musk. And what a great name he's got. Described as a cross between a Concorde, a railgun and an air hockey table, the Hyperloop system would involve elevated steel tubes containing aluminium pods that are mounted on skis. Right, that sounds insane, but let's roll with it. The skis are moved by air that's compressed and routed to them, with magnets helping to give that initial thrust. The Hyperloop could transport cars as well as people. All we need now is for Musk to contribute towards the projected $100 billion costs and we could soon be travelling from San Francisco to LA in 35 minutes. That's not as good as being in a tube, but it's still good. For a lot of people, cycling is a great method of transportation and it also keeps you fit. It produces no harmful emissions other than sweat, which isn't really harmful to anyone other than you, unless you're a really smelly person. And apart from the initial cost of the bike, it's completely free to use. Fantastic. Unfortunately, having cyclists and vehicles on the same roads has not always yielded the best results and some people find using bikes just a bit too hard. A solution to this problem could be the building of elevated three-lane tubes that are only used for cyclists. The tubes would be separated by direction, allowing for air circulation that would create a tailwind, improving a biker's efficiency by as much as 90%. Basically, you'd like to be on a constant kind of warp pad from Mario Kart or something, but in a tube, in the air, on a bicycle. Why doesn't this exist? With the Earth's ever-increasing population, space on our streets is becoming increasingly sparse. One way to get around this is with Colalinia. Basically, it's a ski lift that travels over our roads and involves passengers sitting in battery-powered seats attached to high steel wires and being transported to their destinations. The seats would go lower into the ground in pedestrian zones and rise higher in areas of heavy traffic. Utilising the vertical space available to us may be the future of transportation, though it may be a problem for those with a fear of heights. Another potential future transportation method that takes passengers above street level here, the straddling bus. No, not like that. Come on now, it's not a saucy bus. Although I would like to go on a straddling bus, I don't know about you. The straddling bus would move on stilts above the traffic using small tracks positioned between vehicle lanes while passengers would board and alight via elevated bus stops. This would mean less traffic on the roads, no more surface buses and lanes only for their use and there'd be no need to build an independent track system for the straddling bus. Come on everybody, let's get aboard the straddling bus. No, it's not a sexy thing. Maybe there's a bit. Come on, all aboard. 
Long haul plane journeys really can take a great deal of time. As comfortable as some modern flights claim to be, when you're squashed in a chair for 10 or more hours, you will start wishing for the invention of the teleporter. This is where Skylon comes in. A super fast plane that can travel five times the speed of sound, meaning it takes 300 passengers from London to Sydney in just four hours. The plane would also be able to break out of Earth's orbit, adding the possibility of space tourism. Come on, have a look at space while you're up here. Brilliant. Like its predecessor, the now retired faster than sound plane Concorde, should Skylon become a reality, you can expect tickets to be far from cheap. While sky trams have been taking people up mountains for over a hundred years, the sky tran is a big variation on the concept. Set to run on metal tracks 20 feet above a city's street level, cars will hang below the tracks and move along almost without friction thanks to a magnetic levitation technology. It's either that or magic. I think it's probably magic. Unlike existing tram skyways, the sky tram pods will have only two or four seats and they're designed to be used in the same way as a taxi. There will be hundreds of automated pods on the tracks and travellers can use their smartphones to order one for a specific time. Ray station platforms will be placed at regular intervals and the whole system could eventually run on solar power, meaning no pollution. The self-driving car is, weirdly, one futuristic mode of transport which is virtually upon us already. Google are still testing their version in some US states, Tesla are rolling out a self-driving feature on some of their cars this summer, and a whole host of other technological and vehicle manufacturing companies are getting in on the act fast. The technology that enables these cars to drive themselves involves radars, AI, yes, AI, robots, oh, they're going to take over the world, multiple cameras, and even lasers that generate a detailed 3D model of the car's environment. Guys, simple tip here, don't give the cars AI and lasers. Hasn't anybody seen Terminator 2? Anyway, there's still some way to go before these cars become as mainstream and advanced as science fiction imagines them, but, you know, they still have a lot of trouble. You know, they can't deal with heavy snow and rain, they can't always predict pedestrians' actions, as can I, I mean, I can't predict my actions as a pedestrian. They can't spot potholes, and they often fail to recognise temporary traffic lights. But it's said these problems will be fixed by 2020. Many have questioned if this invention will lead to the demise of driving as an enjoyable pastime, but it's been pointed out that cars will eventually have the ability to switch between manual and automatic driving, and they may also be responsible for wiping out traffic jams, entirely stopping drink driving deaths, and give people who are physically unable to drive a new sense of independence. Actually, forget it, screw it, let's just have flying cars instead. I know they're not practical, but man, they are cool.